Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about magnetic reversals. And here we're actually talking about this one particular study that came out not so long ago that suggests something really horrible happened to our planet approximately 42,000 years ago, during the period that sometimes is referred to as the Adams period, or Adams transitional event, named after the science fiction writer Douglas Adams, who famously had this thing about the number 42. 42 was the answer to everything. But despite this being a somewhat cute reference to this event, it may have actually caused serious disruptions on our planet, including several extinction events. As a matter of fact, this paper also suggests that the extinction events on our planet, including the extinctions of Neanderthals and a lot of other species on the planet, might have been correlated with this event that's definitely going to happen again. So let's talk about this and let's discuss what exactly happened 42,000 years ago. And as you might have already guessed from the title of the video, all of this relates to the magnetic poles of our planet. Here we're talking about the occasional magnetic reversals when the North Pole becomes the South Pole, that is the magnetic North becomes the magnetic South, and vice versa. For example, in one of the previous videos, we've talked about the simulation that established that during the reversal, a lot of really hectic things happened to our planet, resulting in the magnetosphere that's not really that strong. This lasts for anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand years, and after this, the poles become reversed and the south becomes the north. There are actually a lot of studies analyzing these reversal events uh, from the past, and we've already established that they do happen roughly around every 300,000 years or so, but they're also kind of random in some way. So in that sense, we kind of overdue for the next event, and technically it should have happened a few hundred thousand years ago, but since we have no idea how the mechanism of these events works and what exactly causes them, well, we cannot really predict the next one. But the reversal events are actually slightly different from the excursion events. Excursion events are a lot more frequent. Unlike a magnetic reversal, an excursion event is usually temporary and it essentially results in the sudden weakening of the magnetic field with even more chaos and a lot more unpredictable variation of magnetic lines where suddenly things become very different from how they were for thousands and thousands of years. This can last, once again, anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand years, but in the end results in the magnetic fields returning back to where they were. The magnetic north is still the same magnetic north. But as I mentioned, the magnetic excursion events are a lot more frequent. And the last such event to happen, the one that we studied quite a lot, is known as the La Champ excursion event or simply La Champ event. The unusual event that started about 42 to maybe 43,000 years ago that suddenly lowered the magnetic field of our planet for roughly around 400 years or possibly as long as a thousand years. This simulation you see right here shows you in pink and in red colors how the magnetic field was lowered in certain regions of the planet and how it then strengthened after just a few thousand years. Now this particular event is really interesting because it's definitely one of the most studied uh, magnetic events on our planet and it's also the one that's the most easy to study. We have a lot of different sources available including rocks and including different deposits, but also trees and specifically different types of trees that have actually preserved a lot of information in terms of collecting data of carbon-14 and beryllium-10 presence which normally is correlated with higher radiations on the planet. Now here's the thing though. We know that this event definitely happened and we know that this event affected certain parts of the planet more than others. This simulation here actually presents this quite accurately. Certain regions were not as affected, but certain regions in Europe and regions in Australia and New Zealand were affected quite a lot. So in other words, this wasn't really a true reversal, this was an excursion event when the magnetic lines weakened, creating the conditions where the entire magnetosphere of the planet was about 5 to 10% the total strength that we have today, and this lasted for several centuries. Now naturally, if something like this were to happen today, we would be in a lot of trouble. And we do have a lot of similar examples of this happening on Earth already. For example, here's the image taken by ESA last year that shows us this relatively large hole, you could call it, although technically it's known as the South Atlantic Anomaly, that represents a relatively weakened magnetic field that does affect certain objects in orbit of our planet. And the best example of how this affects satellites is from the Hitomi spacecraft that was used by the Japanese Space Agency for several years until it started experiencing unusual glitches 
after passing through the anomaly several times. And this basically, at least unofficially, destroyed the satellite over time. So we know that without the magnetic field to protect our planet, the satellite technology and a lot of aerospace related industries are going to be basically impossible to maintain. Even flying in an airplane is going to become extremely dangerous. And so this magnetic anomaly is a really good example for how dangerous all of this can be if one day another excursion starts to occur. But what exactly happened 42,000 years ago? Well, the reason this event is known as the La Champ excursion is actually because of the place where the original signs of it were discovered. This was in a place called Clermont-Ferrand in France. And it was actually a discovery of different deposits in lava rock that allowed the scientists to study the strength of magnetosphere for essentially several hundred years during that period. But another recent discovery came from another region on the planet using something entirely different, using very ancient trees from New Zealand. The trees that you see right here are known as the Kauri. And there's quite a lot of them that have been preserved in ancient bogs from New Zealand that allow us to basically make a cross-section and then find out what was happening to those trees during that period by studying each individual ring. Some of these trees are actually really ancient and some of them grow to be gigantic, so they're basically a perfect specimen for studying what was happening during those periods. And just as expected, the trees did contain elevated levels of carbon-14 and beryllium-10, indicating that a lot of radiation was reaching our planet, and these trees were essentially bombarded by a tremendous amount of ultraviolet light, tremendous amount of radiation in general, for hundreds and hundreds of years, for over 400 years actually. And although previous studies that used ice cores from Greenland that were around the same age, didn't actually discover anything specific or unusual about the climate during those periods, this once again can be actually explained through the idea of excursions being somewhat localized in how they affect the planet. Certain regions do not get affected as much as other regions. And because of this, certain regions become more climatically affected by certain things than, for example, a region that's on the other side of the planet. But the question is, of course, how did this really affect the planet? And this is where the scientists in this paper look at some of the other events that may have happened around this time and essentially correlate this with several major events that did occur around the same region around the same time. Specifically, the sudden disappearance of megafauna. A large amount of Australian megafauna, or essentially these really large animals that used to exist in Australia and New Zealand, more or less suddenly vanished around the same time. Sometimes it's actually quoted as around 46,000 years ago, but certain studies discover it to be closer to about 42,000 years ago. Now naturally this is a correlation, not a causation, but a very interesting correlation nevertheless. It has been actually speculated that maybe it was the result of human overhunting them, but the disappearance was extremely sudden, and it's also assumed that humans have arrived to this region about 10,000 years prior to their disappearance, so it wouldn't really make sense. But what's even more interesting is that the implication in this paper is that the excursion was also probably responsible for the extinction of our cousins, the Neanderthals. We know that the Neanderthals also have suddenly gone extinct roughly around 40,000 years ago. Now, it previously has been implied that this was maybe a result of a some sort of a competition with humans, basically with us, but the proof for this was never really there. As a matter of fact, in the last couple of years, pretty much most of the studies started to imply that the Neanderthals have actually gone extinct because of the climate change. And this paper specifically makes a very strong case for it. Correlating the excursion event and the various effects that it might have created on the planet with the extinction of Neanderthals and a lot of other species on the planet. And so this of course implies that the excursion event had some major biological effects on the biosphere of our planet. A lot of species might have actually not survived the event and species that did survive it might have been affected by it in some other ways. But the most interesting correlation that they present in this paper is something that actually kind of surprised me. It's in regards to what happened to us. They actually discovered that around the same time our ancestors started to create a lot of these really interesting cave paintings using this very unusual red dye known as the red ochre. It actually did appear very suddenly around this time, around 42,000 years ago, and was found to be displayed in various caves around the planet. It just so happens that the modern humans still use red ochre for something here on the planet. 
it's actually used as a kind of a sunscreen by certain tribes in Africa. The actual name is Ojizi, oh, which is exactly what it's called, probably not. Anyway, that's what a lot of tribes in Namibia still use today to protect themselves from the dangerous effects of the sun and from basically being burned by the ultraviolet radiation. And you might kind of already see where I'm going with this. It looks like 42,000 years ago, when the magnetic field weakened and when a lot of radiation started to reach our planet and very likely also started to decrease the ozone layer as well, the amount of UV light on the planet also increased dramatically. This obviously would cause things to burn pretty easily. UV light is pretty damaging to a lot of different cells. And because of this, maybe ancient humans discovered the secret weapon the ability to protect themselves from the UV light, which allowed them to kind of survive and to thrive afterwards. We don't really know if this is exactly what happened, but it is kind of implied in the study. But because the atmosphere was so ionized, it also very likely changed the climate completely. There was a lot of lightning, a lot of storms, a lot of different conditions that simply do not exist today, so the entire night skies probably looked very different from how it is today. And for all we know, Maybe because of all of these crazy conditions outside, including lightning strikes, very very powerful sun, and a lot of radiation coming from everywhere, the humans decided to stick around the caves a lot more frequently, thus allowing them to basically create these paintings that we later found. None of this is of course a fact yet, but the implications coming from the study and the analysis performed in the study are nevertheless very very interesting. But that's all cool and all, how does it actually affect us? Well, it just so happens that we don't really know when the next excursion is going to happen. Some people have already started to speculate that we're sort of headed there. As a matter of fact, if you look at the total strength of the magnetic field, it looks like it kind of weakened in the last century or so. It actually is about 10% weaker than it was roughly around 200 years ago. At the same time, we have this new thing going on with the magnetic north suddenly moving extremely fast. So fast, as a matter of fact, that the scientists had to recalculate their previous assumption about how fast it's moving. You can actually see this right here with the modeled prediction versus the observed motion of the magnetic field showing us how far and how quickly it has already moved just in these five years. There's currently no actual explanation for what's happening with the magnetic north, but some people have already implied that maybe this is what's going to happen in the next few hundreds of years. Maybe, just maybe, we are actually headed toward an excursion event. And if we are to learn anything from the past, from the event 42,000 years ago, and also from the effects we've already observed with the anomaly in the south that has already destroyed at least one satellite, this is something that we might want to kind of start preparing for, just in case. We don't really know if this is exactly what's happening or if it's going to affect us in any way, but it would probably kind of help us to be a little bit more prudent. We know that the magnetic field is essential for our planet, so the sudden decrease in the magnetic field might actually affect us quite a lot. Luckily for us, we already have several different papers also suggesting how we can potentially create artificial magnetic field. But that's something we'll talk about in one of the future videos. On that note, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Also, I'm pretty sure we have nothing to worry about for the next few decades, so you can kind of rest well for now.